big Bank of Canada announcement. Big announcement. Nothing happened. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing happened. So no increase in prime from the Bank of Canada. Uh, a bunch of words came out. Uh, you know, Tiff Macklin said a bunch of stuff. Oh, we're going to make mentalize and we're going to study and we're going to consider and we're going to talk to Hawkish Town. So he just said a bunch of babbling bullshit about that he wants to stay aggressive about watching inflation. He's going to be tough and hard guy. Like, I know Tiff Macklin really comes across as a tough guy, right? Like, you can just probably just see him, uh, you know, in a bar fight mopping the room you know wiping people out like no of course not that's ridiculous but the truth is no no increase yammers on about how there's going to be he's going to watch it closely there could be future increases because he needs to have that language out there he needs to know that that he's telling people that the the rate could still he could still raise rates it's that simple but no rate increase so why didn't he increase the rates well inflation did come down a tiny bit but the reality is it looks like the recession's coming. It looks like there's going to be economic slowdown. I know, I know, a bunch of people are going to put in the comments, no, I went to the keg and it was full, or oh, uh, I was at a parking lot and it was full, I, oh, I went, uh, everything's full. Well, maybe in your town that night it was, okay? But let's face it, we've read the stories of the layoffs. There have been extensive layoffs at the banks, because not because the banks are in trouble, because they're just not as busy. We Look at the trucking hours. That's the hours on the road that truckers actually put in across Canada. And they're down. And they continue to drop. There's all kinds of different ways of looking at this. And just whether the keg is really busy on a uh, Friday night is not really the key indicator. All right? So everything points to a slowdown. Everything does. And that's what the whole idea behind... Higher, these high interest rates, these very high interest rates, we started out really low, super low, stupidly low, all wrong that was so low for so long, that was stupid. But now, obviously, they're way up compared with where they were. It's like a, um, you know, it's like a 450% increase. Like, it's, it's, it's a lot. So it's taking its effect. And that means people will lose jobs and the economy will slow. People will buy less stuff. And that's what reduces inflation. Inflation comes down when people stop spending uh, because the people the people who sell you stuff have to compete and they have to compete on price because when everything slows down, people aren't buying, there's got to be a way for people, for the people who want to sell you stuff to encourage you to buy. That's lower prices. There, there goes inflation. Inflation is never going to come down to the super low levels we saw in the 2000s. I mean, we just, there's various reasons for it. I won't go through all of it, but it can get down. Inflation can get down to pretty close to where the 2% mark that they want to achieve, but it's going to take some time. But the real reason no rate increase is it looks like the economy is being damaged. It looks like it's going to work. Okay. So the next logical question is, okay, if the rates aren't going to go up, by the way, they could, they could look, we don't know. Like all of a sudden there's a war between Israel, US and Iran uh, oil production goes to nothing and, from that region, and all of a sudden the price of oil shoots through the roof and inflation is back roaring again, and who knows? Who knows? Because you could, there's the counter, uh, the counter argument that, well, in that kind of an emergency, they'd lower rates. Look, I'm just suggesting to everyone that it's very volatile, it's uncertain, and rates could still go up. It's possible, okay? So People like to talk now about the cuts. When will the rate cuts start? And I don't blame people for talking about it because it's logical. Like if you've got a mortgage up coming up for renewal this year, next year, or if you've got a variable rate mortgage or you've got a line of credit that's gone up so much in cost, yeah, when's it going to come down? Well, here's what I'll tell you for sure. Everyone who tells you it's coming down in March and April next year, like, okay, it's October now, March, April next year, there will be cuts. There will not be cuts in March and April. That is bullshit. Do not listen to that. That is just lies, all right? Not coming down in March and April. Maybe the summer, maybe July, maybe not. Maybe November, maybe 2025, but not March and April. Don't listen to those people, okay? Now, one important point. Once it's absolutely sure the economy is really screwed up, there's obviously much higher unemployment, uh, sales everywhere are down, 
you know, all kinds of sales are down everywhere. It's really clearly a bad recession, or at least a, a, a true recession that we're in, and people are feeling it. Well, at that point, once everyone can be sure that the rates of cuts will come eventually, then fixed mortgage rates actually come down. That's how it works. Fixed mortgage rates went up long before the Bank of Canada started to raise rates, and typically fixed rates will come down uh, before the Bank of Canada drops rates. As soon as there's a certainty that there will be no more increases and that there will be cuts on the horizon. So what to tell people? Okay, there's not going to be any 299 rates in the future. Uh, there's not going to be uh, sudden cuts in March and April. None of that's going to happen. But eventually, probably by the end of next year, there will be some rate cuts. But it's still a chance of one more increase from the Bank of Canada. Not out of the woods. But it's looking more and more like the recession is here and that inflation will drop and that eventually, sometime late 2024, early 2025, rates will come down. 